הדלקת? אוקיי, את תראי שזה עובד? מי שצריך להסתכל על זה שזה כל הזמן דלוק. אוקיי, so now we can continue. I was asked the question, so how come we have wars? Does God cause us to have wars? No. Dear women, it's not God. We cause ourselves these problems. Because God is everything about truth, honesty, and love and kindness. And as I already told you in our lessons, that from heaven, there's a, a tube of asperity that comes to a person. Only good words come to a person. If, for example, there's a word, shh, If, for example, there's a word of oneg that comes to a person, the word of oneg, which means pleasure, God gives, says, my son, we're going to bless him with pleasure. If, God forbid, this person sinned, the letters in the same word change their places, and instead of oneg, it's nega, it's a problem. It's the same letters, dear women. So we have nega now instead of that. So we cause by our sins, we cause ourselves problems. God says you can choose to go by the way of the Torah and my way, and you can choose the good. So everything good will, you'll have. And then God said you can choose to go in a different way, And then you're going to have, God forbid, problems in your life and, so and sorrows. When we have wars, it's because God wants to remind us. Do, repent, do tshuva, quickly do tshuva. When the nations, shh, it's important. When the nation knock on our doors, like now. If you'll see, like now, that there's anti-Semitism all over the world, especially in Europe, also here there is. But it still is silent, you know, it's on a small fire. God forbid if it will be on a big fire. Listen, this is because of us, dear women, because God wants us to wake up. He says that if we do not wake up, then we'll have problems, but he does it slowly. So if we will remember and understand and wake up, Bezrat Hashem, then we won't have any problems. Then none of the nations can hurt us. They cannot come even close to us. You understand? The whole prosperity of the whole world depends on the Jewish people. The whole world. If the nations would understand that if the Jewish people kept the Torah, and by keeping the Torah and living in the land of Israel, there will be prosperity all over the world, then I'm, I'm, I assure you that they will have seen to it that all of the Jewish people will go back to their land, to Israel, and that they will keep the Torah and they will see that the whole world will have prosperity. There won't be any pro problem. Not with nature, and not with food, and not with wars. Everybody will live in peace. There won't, we don't even need borders. Shh. Harambam. Shh. הרמב״ם says, הרמב״ם says, it's something beautiful, במורה נבוכים, מורה נבוכים, I will translate it as it is, it means a teacher for the ones that are confused. So it says that when you see wickedness in the world, the wickedness is caused by the absence of wisdom. היעדר חוכמה גורמת לרשע. Which means, it's not because a person is very smart, because if a person is smart, he understands that he comes to this life for a portion of time, you know, for a period of time that is limited. We do not live for eternity. So he understands that everything that he does, that everything that he does in this world influences what will happen in this world and in the next world, in the true world. All the fruits, you understand, everything that we do, we merit for it, the fruits, the good fruits, we merit in the true world. Dear women, it says, it says in the, in the Gemara, Masechet, uh, <coughs> Masechet Ta'anit, Masechet Ta'anit, it says about Choni HaMe'agel, you know who was Choni HaMe'agel? Choni HaMe'agel is this, is a person that was, his nickname, he was called the circle making. And why was he called the circle making? He was called by this because when there wasn't... Shh. A few more minutes we'll take. <laughs> It's called the, he was called the circle making. And why? Because there were times that there wasn't any rain in, in Israel. 
So every, all the Jewish people came to him, to Choni Magel, he was a big rabbi. And, he told, and they told him, please daven for us so we can have rain in the, in, on, in the land. So he davened and davened very hard to Hashem, and there wasn't any rain. Hashem did not accept his davening. So you know what he did? He made a circle around himself, a big circle, like a cake, and he stood inside the circle. And he said, God, I'm going to use your name. He said, I'm using your secret name. Your name, he said, and God, I'm not going to move from this circle unless you bring rain upon us. He said, I'm not going to go out of this circle unless you bring rain. So a little by little, rain started to fall from the sky, from heaven. So all the people that were gathered around him, the Jewish people, they said, wow, God brings this rain. It's not for blessing. It's because God, you, 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 you swore, you made an oath. So God wants you to take off your oath. That's why he brings the rain. So when God heard this, it says... When God heard this, it says in the Gemara that big, big drops of water started to come down, mamash, like blocks. One drop was like one block. So big drops of water. So the people told him, what are you doing? It's like the Mabud, there will be a flood. We will all die. This is not a blessing. <laughs> so then he asked from God that Bezat Hashem, the, the rain will, that is going to fall would be a rain of blessing Bezat Hashem. So this is how Chania Magel received his name because inside the circle, he received his name. He was called by this circle, uh, the circle maker. And God gave blessing and prosperity of rain to the Jewish people. But I would like to tell you something that is connected to Tu Bishvat about him. And it says in Masechet Ta'anit, It says in Masechet Ta'anit, It's a beautiful story about Chania Magel. Listen. <laughs> it says like this, that he, he always thought about a sentence from the Torah that says this, כל ימיו של אותו צדיק היה מצטער על מקרא שיר המעלות, you know King David wrote it, שיר המעלות בשוב השם את שיבת ציון which means the, the song of the מעלות when God took, took from exile all, all the Jewish people back to the, to the promised land so it says שיר המעלות בשוב השם את, שיב, את, 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 בשוב השם את שיבת ציון he says היינו כחולמים so Chani Amagel said to himself the circle maker said to himself, how can you understand this sentence? How can a person sleep, he says, for 70 years in one sleep? You know, during one time that we sleep, it will be a, a, the, the um, time of 70 years will pass. He said, how come? Because, because it says when the children of Israel will come from exile. This was written, King David wrote it after the exile of the first temple. And the first temple, when it was ruined, they were exiled to Babylon for 70 years, and then they came back to the land of Israel. So Choni Magel asked, how can, this, how can this be? That a person can sleep for 70 years. The King David writes it. Look for how beautiful it is. And King David already knew about Choni Magel. So he saw a person, uh, Carib, Carib. So he saw a person that was planting a, a carob tree. And he asked him, tell me please, how long does it take to, 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 uh, to this tree to grow? He says, 70 years. So he asks him, carob tree, charuv, charuvim. You know the things that... Um, this is Charuv. Okay, so he told him, he says, 70 years it takes him in order to grow. And to have fruits. So he told him, why do you do that? Why do you plant it? Leave it to your children. He says, no, I came to this world and I already saw carob trees. So I'm going to plant it so my children and my great-grandchildren and all the generation that comes, my descendants, will, have, will enjoy the fruits of this tree. When he heard this, Choni and Magel, he went to sleep, dear women. And, and it says in the Gemara that he slept for 70 years. When he slept, God took a stone and put over their cellar that nobody can see him. They could not find him. They thought he passed away, but they did not find him. They did not find his body. After 70 years, he woke up. 
When he woke up 70 years, one sleep, he did not wake up in between for 70 years because he asked Shira Ma'alot, Veshuv Hashem Shivat Tzion, Enuk Ainu Kacholmim. So he, he asked the question, God gave him what his mouth took out, God, God made it true, come true. So he asked, he saw a person standing this, next to this carob tree. He said, tell me, are you the one that planted the carob tree? He said, no, this was my grandfather, he already passed away. So Khani Amagel was, he had a question mark, how come this is the grandchild? So he went to his home and he looks and he says, is the son of Khani Amagel alive? So they said, no, my father passed, passed away, I'm his son, which means this is his grand, his grandchild. But he did not recognize him at all. So he went to the Midrash, to the yeshiva, where he used to teach. And you have to know that whenever the rabbis had a question, Chonya Megel had the answer. He gave him all of the answers. So he went to the Bet Midrash and he went inside and he saw that they were saying to themselves, in the generation of Chonya Megel, we had all of the answers. Mm -hmm. So he told them, I am Chonya Megel. It's me, I'm the circle maker. Mm -hmm. And they did not believe him. Nobody believed him. And they did not respect him. He was shocked. He went outside and he said, God, I cannot live in a world that nobody recognizes the wisdom of the Torah that I have inside me. Please take me from this world. And at that minute he passed away, dear women. But this is, this is, but look at the beautiful, this is what planting a tree in the ground, you see, for the next generation. This is the essence of Tu Bishva. So it says over here, in the Sifra it's, it's written Melamed Shechayav Shel Adam Einan El Amin Elan, which means that the life of a human being is only from the tree it's compared, it's part of the tree because the tree has the roots that it's the emunah and then it has Geza Bak it has the bark just like just like the study of the Torah. It's just like us. If we study the Torah, it's like our clothing to the next world. And then all of the branches of the tree and the apples are all the commandments that we fulfill and all of the good deeds that we do in this world. I would like to tell you something. Uh, it's written in Rosh Hashanah. In, it's written in the Gemara of Rosh Hashanah that Tu Bishvat, is by Bet Shammai, Bet Shammai said that Tu Bishvat is on the first day of Chodesh Shvat. And then Bet Hillel said that it's on the 15th of Chodesh Shvat. Yeah. Dear women, I would like to show you it over here. It says exactly, this is quoted from the Gemara, Rosh, Echad Bishvat, Rosh Hashanah Lailan. Pay attention, it's not written to the trees, it's the, it's the first year of the trees, the, the, the the 15th or the 1st of Shvat, the month of Shvat, but it's written to the tree, one tree. I will finish with this because it's very important. One tree, and why one tree, dear women? You have to understand, why one tree? Why did, why did they write it? Why Rabbi Udana Si put it in the Mishnah that uh, regarding only one tree, because we are speaking about all of the trees. Dear women, listen very carefully. They mean that we are doing the fixing of the tree of knowledge that the first human being ate from it. Wow. Why do we bless the Why do we bless the Kshivu? Why do we bless over the fruits of the Holy Land? The seven fruits of the Holy Land. You remember we studied also in Alachot we studied it. Okay, why do we bless? Because, dear women, we are doing the fixing of the first human being. That is the fixing, because he ate from the tree of knowledge. If you pay attention to the orla, which means orla is, is a forbidden fruit. When, we, when the tree is planted for three years, we are not allowed, in the land of Israel, we are not allowed to eat from the tree for three years. And this is a big question. Why, don't, why aren't we allowed to eat for three years? Why, why don't we? Why aren't we allowed to eat from it? So, it's a big question. And more than that, for three years, on the fourth year, she a neta rivi. It's called in Hebrew neta rivi. The fourth year is called neta rivi. We take the fruits, the first fruits. We go to Jerusalem to the temple. Over there, we give it to Ken and we bless and we eat it together over there in holiness. Then, from the fifth year, we can eat the fruits of the tree. This is, very, this is the laws, this, this is the laws, and the question is why, 
Because dear women, when the first human being, Adam Arishon, Achal Me'etz Adat, ate from the, the tree of knowledge, because of him, the, the earth was cursed. The ground was cursed. It says in there, Bebereshit, it's written like this. Adam Amar, he said, he said to the, the first human being, Ki shamata lekol ishtecha, because you listened to your wife, betochal minayetz, and you ate from the tree of knowledge, arura ha'adama ba'avurcha, which means the land is cursed for you. What does it mean? Because we can see that the land does give fruit, so how come it's cursed? Dear women, when the first human being was walking on earth, that when the, he planted something, it grew immediately. It did not take time to grow. Immediately, when Mashiach comes, it will come back to the ways we will live in. This will be paradise. When we plant something, it will grow immediately. You understand? You do not have to wait. And everything will be big and juicy and sweet. This is the land. You will see in the land of Israel, when you eat the fruits of the land of Israel, they are sweet. When you eat mango in, in the land of Israel, it's like, it's like honey. When you come to, to the, the nations, when you come to other countries, you can see over there that even it's, it looks nice, but when we eat it, it's not sweet as it's in the land of Israel. That's the blessing of the land of Israel. The land of milk and honey, it's a true blessing. You, when you eat in Israel, the fruits and the vegetables, it's a different taste one from what we eat anywhere around, outside the land of Israel, in exile. So dear women, so the land was cursed. And now we're doing the Nishmat. So what happened to a person, I gave a, a, a big lesson about it. You remember that it's written in Masechet Avot, Bamishnah Masechet Avot, it's written, Hakina Tarava Kavod Motzinet Adam in Aulam, which means jealousy, lust, and honor takes a person out of this world, literally, and causes him death. It says, Kina Rekev Atzamot, he who is jealous with, in, in other people, his bones, when he dies, rot in the grave. If he has jealousy, the jealousy causes the bones to rot in the grave. Kina rekev atzamot, did you women? So, uh, uh, so when a person comes before he dies, the angel of death, shh, the angel of death is standing in front of him, and he has a sword, and he has it says in Masechet Avodah Zarah, he has a drop uh, on the sword, a drop, and this drop is combined from three shh. So this drop is combined of three drops. What kind of drop? Jealousy, lust, and honor. And dear women, lust, when you have lust for food, for women, for money, desire. for desire. 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 It's a bad desire. It's not, it's not a good one. So dear women, who creates the, the drop? that the drop uh, <coughs> on, on the sword of, of the angel of death, we create it, each one of us. By our sins, we create the drop. And it says over there that the drop is from three, I told you it's, con it's combined of three characteristics, jealousy, lust, and, and honor. So dear women, those three drops that were created by the first human being and his wife, because the snake caused them to rise to, you know, to rise to the, to raise to the surface those characteristics. So because of that, the, the drop of the angel of death was created. And now, this drops, when, he, when it goes to the ground, it causes the drop that there will be impurity in the ground. So that's why the tree has to grow for three years to overcome jealousy, lust, and honor, the three things we have to wait for three years in order to overcome this, this impurity because it's a, a physical impurity and a spiritual one. That's why God says do not, you cannot, you're not allowed to eat from it because this is part of the fixing. And the more we bless over the fruits, the more we are fixing. We bless the, the blessing in the beginning and the blessing at the end. So we are fixing, the, we are part of the fixing of the first human being. And why do we need to fix? Some, one of you can ask me, but we did not sin. He sinned. So why do we need to fix? If we did not sin, why do we need to fix? 
So dear women, we were all part of the first human being. All the women were part of Chava, and all of the men were part of Adam Rishon. So once they ate, it's like we ate. We are part of them, we're part of one soul. So once they ate it, we ate it. So we are part of this fixing, we have to fix it. It cannot go away by its own, we have to fix it. We do it spiritually by eating. Abal Shem Tov says, we, when we eat, each woman, when you eat, you, you take your hand and you take a specific, you see I have three cakes that are the same. And, and still my hand will go to one piece of cake. Even though there are three the same over here, but my hand will go to one piece of cake. Why? Because that piece of cake is part of my fixing. And inside there's a soul, a nefesh, that I need to bless in order that it will pass to the next world and I will do its fixing and my fixing. Do you understand? Do what? Do the <coughs> so, I do the first bracha. What happens if I do not do it? When I eat something, it becomes part of my blood stream. It, it flows in my blood. When we eat something, it flows in our blood. So the, the, spiritual, the spiritual nefesh that was in that thing flows in our blood too. If it was not a good nefesh, it was, if it was a, a nefesh that had sins, all of its spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual essence will go into our body too. So if we blessed, we made a fixing and only good will happen to us. But if we didn't, we are going to gain part of this characteristic of that soul that we ate and did not bless. Do you understand? It's part of our body because it goes in our, in our bloodstream. So this is a big fixing which we do. So dear women, we wait for three years, dear women, because we need to fix what the first human being did. So this is part, it's a, the first year is why, for the... Uh, for why will, I'm sorry, I'm very interrupt you. Why would the fourth year, the, 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 the whatever we're getting from that tree, why we are eating in Jerusalem? In, uh, because we finished the fixing, it's like eating before Hashem. So then God b b brings purity around us and everything is in holiness. You understand? Yeah, Nothing can that, harm that, us. That, 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 if you are still in, a, in a, uh, the Israel, right? You are in a still for the uh, holy land. Why you have to go to the Jerusalem to eat because the, from, on the fourth year the product, or that you can eat? The no, 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 no. Because why did they go to the, the temple, dear women? They went to the temple because the essence of Hashem. You went to the temple is over there. You gave it to the Kohen and the Levi, and over there you received the blessing and you ate from it because it has to be eaten in holiness because from this we learn modesty dear women we learn how to thank Hashem and to understand that everything comes from Him it's not ours it's not if shh, it, it's not that if I work very you know dear women there are people that think that if we work very hard then a person may tell you well I work very hard and because I work very hard I have money Dear women, that's not true. It's because of the blessing, because of the blessing of Hashem we have money. Because there are people that work very hard and they have a lot of money and all of the money goes in between their fingers. They cannot see nachat from the money. <laughs> the, uh, listen, listen, so it, the blessing of Hashem gives us prosperity. When does a person is humble and understands that the blessing of Hashem gives him prosperity? When he does not, when he's allowed to eat from the fruit and he understands that he will take the fruit to Jerusalem, to the temple, and first of all give it to the King of Kings and say thank you over there. And then he will be uh, allowed to eat from it, which means that he conquered his lust. He conquered his honor. He conquered his jealousy. You understand? He, he received humbleness. I will end with this. We need to like, Adam it's like the human being is like the tree, dear women. It, we need to learn from the tree. What do we learn from the tree? Humbleness. When you take a seed of a tree, an apple tree, for example. When you take, for example, an apple tree, dear women, you take a seed, put it in the ground. What happens to the seed? You know what it happens to it? It, it becomes nothing. It rots in the ground. First of all, it rots. After it becomes nothing, after it rots, then from that it grows. So it means that we are dear women. We need to remember that in this world, shh, that we are only the tools of Hashem in this world. 
We should not have pride, only pride of Hashem. We should not have pride of, on ourselves. Who are we? You know, in one minute, it's like Tito Sarasha. It says about Tito Sarasha that he said to Hashem, well, Hashem is, he is, is a God, but I, in God forbid, a bigger God. He said, Hashem can only, God can only conquer places or, or nations by water. He said, look at the, the generation of Enosh, the flood ca killed them. The gener generation of uh, Noah, the flood killed them, water killed them. And then the Egyptians also, Hashem killed them with water. They drowned in the water. So he said, but I, I conquered, I went with a sword, I conquered places. Tito said, God said, this is what you're saying, I will show you who is ruling the world. Who is the true ruler? He took a fly, a yetush, a fly. fly. He took a fly and he told the fly to go through the, through the nose to the brains of Titos. The fly went through the nose to his brain. Over there, it was a, a, a female fly. She laid eggs. You know, he couldn't sleep, he couldn't walk, he couldn't do anything. He, he asked to open his, he, they opened his uh, sc uh, brains. brains, they opened and they found there a nest full of flies inside. He died because of it. Oh so God showed him, that's what you think, that you are the ruler of the world, you conquered places, you have money, you have servants, you have slaves. God showed him, I am the ruler of the world, so dear women, Dear women, listen very carefully. We need to study from the trees, from the seeds. What is humbleness? This is all about Tu Bishvat. Everything is about humbleness. Tu Bishvat is the, the birthday of the trees. So dear women, with these words I would like to tell you, Bezrat Hashem, Shegea Mashiach Tzitkan B'mara B'yameinu, Amen. Shegea Mevaser, Eliyar Nevi Leyar Tishvi Leyar Gleim Rabban Shech. ומראה ומשך דבר אליהו נביא זכור לטוב. ועולם יפרד אדם מחברו בדבר הלכה יחיד ורבים הלכה כרבים. אמן.